Hey guys, another episode with Johan Builds. If you like what you see or this is helpful, please subscribe, comment, and hit like. Let's get into it. Okay, YouTube. Well, this is a uh, another installment of the Yukon Rehab. So today is going to be a, a header day and a few other things. Engine mount bolts, our engine mount uh, <clears throat> uh, replacement, uh, which we'll do in, in another video. But just so today, just uh, received in the Gibson uh, ceramic coated stainless header, 16 millimeter. It came with uh, that header you see there, a second one, the gaskets and uh, all the other stuff you see here in front of you. So, pretty excited about this. This is gonna reduce the uh, temperature under the hood, uh, increase the f airflow, and basically just increase the performance. We're also gonna do some other additions, but this is the header series. The instructions that came with uh, Gibson Performance headers are, are pretty good, and they're pretty thorough. So, just walk through, here's what I did. Uh, I put it up on some heavy-duty jack stands. I gave it a thorough shake test to make sure that uh, it's all uh, solid and stable. Uh, next step is obviously we're going to... I, I installed uh, a while ago a quick disconnect on the battery terminal. So go ahead and uh, disconnect the battery terminal or take your negative lead off. Um, I also put in a K&N air filter and uh, system. Which I'm really happy with. It's been just a fantastic addition. So we're going to uh, unbolt, remove that. We're going to take off <clears throat> all of the uh, electrical connectors, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this is a really simple unbolt. It's a, uh, a one simple uh, screwdriver right there. That thing pops off, and just like just like that. And then there's another bolt inside the uh, fender well, which is right there. So we pop that off and then we can uh, disconnect, take that thing out and then we're going to start with the driver's side. Now if you look over here you can see standard manifolds uh, nice and rusted but cast iron and reliable. They've been good for 17 years. So we're going to go through the process and you can see we're going to we are going to take off the, uh, the spark plugs. You can see the wire looms which are bolted to the uh, head. You can see in the back the EGR. I'll get a light so you can see that better because that's a little bit dim. But you can see the... Oh man, that's too dark. Let me get a light. Ooh, that's better. Alright. So, anyway, there's a better uh, overhead shot of the manifolds, you can see what we're going to have to disconnect. I'm going to take sure, make sure that I take all of the uh, spark plugs and wires out, and the instructions say that. And then in the back, you can see the uh, the EGR hose that's connected to manifold, and that is right. Well. Right there. Right there. All right. So, anyway, we'll pop that off. Uh, we have uh, an open-ended wrench for that. But first, uh, I'm going to crawl under. And if you look down there, you can see the connecting flange, which is for the exhaust. So I'm going to pop that off first, crawl underneath that, at least make sure I can break it loose. That's one of my concerns is this whole project is uh, can I break things loose? Uh, the first thing I did last night is I actually used a PB blaster and uh, soaked all of the bolts and nuts uh, attached on both the exhaust connector and the uh, uh, and the, the header itself or the manifold itself. So that's been soaked thoroughly. Hopefully that reduces the torque pressure required by 50% according to what they say and all right so let's get under the car and let's get started okay under the vehicle uh, one thing I forgot to say is you're always going to want to use safety glasses whenever you get into the truck so um, there it is there's the flange and the attachment points uh, you can see how uh, well soaked that is still soaking with the PB overnight and it looks like it's a, uh, it's a 15 millimeter nut 
and let's get started. Okay, so I got the exhaust flanges uh, unbolted from underneath the truck, and I just pulled off the wire looms. I marked them. Make sure you mark them, however your vehicle indicates. You know, two four six eight driver side, and uh, and uh, just put some blue tape. Pull those on. There's a uh, little wire loom uh, nut right there. You can see that. So I had to pull that out, and a second one right there. So once I got those out, then I could pull the wire looms out, uh, move it up, get it out of the way, pull the spark plug uh, wires off, and um, I have some other work I'm going to do on this. So I know there's a risk of breaking the spark plugs, but uh, I'm going to see. I'm going to make a command decision later on, see if I need to pull the spark plugs out first, or uh, or if I can work around that. So. Anyway, the next item is the, you can see the uh, EGR back there, so I'm going to have to unbolt that, get that out of the way, and then I can attack these, uh, apparently there's four headers, two bolts, knock that out, and then, uh, then we'll see if, what the rest of it holds. Okay, so here's a huge pain in the ass. I finally got the uh, EGR hose off, and you can see that right there. This is actually, it's a little bit confusing if you haven't done this before, like I haven't done it before. Um, you can see that there's a, that big, giant, about three-quarter inch nut. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see I finally got the header, the manifold out. Lots of nice working space in there. So, uh, anyway, if we go over here, uh, there it is, there's the old manifold, but you can see that there's this, there's this nut right there, and it's, some, it's a little difficult to tell which you're supposed to crank on, uh, especially since they're both super tight. Anyway, uh, hit it with some PBR, and um, uh, it's, it's, it, wasn't, it was bigger than a 24, I don't know exactly how big it is. I used a small uh, crescent wrench. The only thing I could get in there is this little thing, small little crescent wrench. And but anyway, yeah, it's probably about an inch. So there you go, uh, one down. Uh, and I'm gonna clean things up a little bit. And uh, actually, uh, the next step, and this will be another video, but I'll take the video now, is I'm gonna replace the engine mounts. So now I got some room in there. I got a cherry picker and I'll be able to take that thing out. So uh, that's what I'm doing next. So talk to you. Okay, I'm going to start the passenger side now. Just remove the uh, K&N cold air intake. And that's what we got to work with. So some of the steps involved in this. Uh, same thing. We're going to replace the uh, or pull off the wire looms uh, and the bracket holding the yeah, dipstick in. We're gonna take off these that wire loom, that wire loom. Um, I'll tag and record these. I've been uh, I do that every time, so I know easily which is uh, which cylinder, which wire. Take those off. Um, pull out the spark plugs, and then uh, you can see that it's already unbolted from the uh, exhaust flange back there. Take off these six heads and studs. And hopefully uh, that's not a huge pain in the ass to pull out. And then, uh, and then from there we'll be able to see. This is where this is the, the target I have. From here we will target the uh, passenger side motor mount. So I got a cherry picker. I'll get to that later on. But anyway, let's get on this first. Okay, I got the uh, spark plug wires pulled out. Spark plugs uh, pulled out. The uh, wire looms, as you can see up there, uh, right here, I tagged each one of them. Uh, this is the only one I didn't tag, but you can tag it by cylinder with some blue tape, write a name on it, uh, and that'll make your life a lot easier. This thing actually just pulls out. Some people say there's like a 15 millimeter nut on there. There is, but it actually just attaches to uh, the wire loom right there, so. Right there. So. Anyway, once you pull out, then you literally just pull this thing out and take the dipstick out first, so you know, bend it up. And uh, that's where we are. Uh, safety note, you know, t take a glove and stick it over the intake so you don't drop anything in there. 
I hear stories about that. And I got that advice from uh, friends on YouTube too, as well. So here's what we have. Basically uh, six bolts left or four bolts and two studs, I guess however you want to call it that. Uh, so we're going to pull these out and then, uh, and then we should be done with that. And then we can start to look at the uh, engine mount down there, see what uh, is going on down there. So see you in a bit. Hey YouTube, uh, JC here. Well, I am um, from a previous video or later video. Uh, I am swapping on my my stock manifolds for some Gibson ceramic um, stainless headers. So, uh, accordingly, my passenger side motor mount uh, I could tell was failing. So um, I figured, well, as long as I got the headers out, it's probably easier to do this here, and it looks like it. So here is the motor mount right down there and uh, I'm not sure exactly yet until I kind of dig in there and see what you have to take off I have a cherry picker uh, I know some people say you can just raise a little bit off the oil pan but since I have the cherry picker I'll use it so anyway so there is that's the uh, left motor mount and obviously you can see how much room you have once you get the headers out or once you get that manifold out so uh, that's step one is passing driver side and then here we have on the passenger side uh, same thing you can kind of see down there and this is what's going to end up uh, coming out you can see so you can see it looks like a one two bolts that tie directly into uh, the bottom of the engine itself there's a three bolt down there let's see if I can Light's always good. Okay, so you can see the uh, through bolt over there, All right down there, and uh, connections into the motor itself, and then one, two to the frame, and there might be one or two on the back side. So uh, I'm going to kind of dig into it. I'm going to get the cherry picker out and see what I need to do, and. Dive in it. Uh, this will be. I'm doing the transmission mount as well, so that's where we are. Back in a bit. Okay, one of the other components today we're pulling out is the the old OEM transmission mount. You can see it's pretty well uh, torn up on that side and squished down. So what we did is. Just, that's a little hard to see with the sun. There we go. Just a couple of blocks of wood uh, back on the aluminum case at the very bottom. It's the best as I could do with that. And then let's see if we can get in there. That's still too dark. So just raise that up. And then here you can just see. I probably need to raise up the jack about another eighth of an inch. I can't quite squeeze that in there, but. Anyway, that little clamshell squeezes in there nicely. Uh, the gold bolts that they send with the package uh, just go under there. The original hardware that came uh, with the truck uh, will go in there without bolt down. And then uh, we're in. And we got uh, one out of three down. Motor mounts coming next. Okay, so we're back on the project uh, motor mount. And what a bear that was. So we ended up uh, snapping off a bolt. In the back, uh, it didn't quite hold it, and there's some uh, discussions about having too short of a chain because I did have a, a full uh, cherry picker. But anyway, you can't see it back there, but it's broken off. So uh, anyway, with some gentle nudging, we threw some uh, small little uh, couple weights, a couple blocks of wood under the oil pan, and that. Uh, with some gentle nudging, that made it pretty nice and secure. Raise it just up enough. Uh, well, I dropped it back down on the on the frame, but raise it just up enough to pull out the uh, old motor mount. And here's what you got. Now this is from the this is actually from the driver, uh, the passenger side, which is not as horrible looking as the other one, but. So now the next step is to 
follow the energy suspension instructions, um, drilling out those one, two, three rivets, and then putting it in for the clamshell. So that's where we're heading with that. Uh, that's the next step we're drilling. But anyway, that's where we got, and uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, well, we got the first one drilled out. This is the this is the passenger side. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the driver's side. So you can see it's not not as bad and beaten up and garbage like as this one. Here is here is the really badly broken one that's been broken for a while. That's the passenger side. And uh, as soon as I get those drilled out, we'll replace those. Okay, got everything out. Uh, all the rubber broken stuff out and uh, just ended up doing a little quick wire wheel, some brake cleaner. And uh, I'm gonna hit it with a little Rust-Oleum, paint it up, and uh, start to assemble. Okay, so the wire wheel is complete. So the next step is I just finished uh, hitting these with the uh, the rust fixed, the dupli color. Uh, basically, it's gonna function as a primer. So once that dries, then I'll hit it with my, uh, you know, the other rust stopping. I just have a leftover can of the Rust-Oleum for the uh, automotive enamel. Hit those with a nice black, clean it up, and then uh, reinstall later. Okay, I'm back in uh, the shop for a little while. <clears throat> I just got finished painting with a nice black uh, gloss, the uh, bracket mounts. And I wanted to show you, here's what the, the old rubber motor mount looks like. Crumbly, dry. I can pull. I can pull it apart with just my fingers like that. That's that's how uh, bad they were. Sorry about the camera work there. It's tough when you don't have somebody with you. You can see the underside right there, and uh, that's about, that's about as bad as it gets. You don't change these out, and you have all kinds of other problems. So, as soon as uh, the brackets are done drying, I'll come out and we'll start to install. Okay, so we're back at the assembly phase. The paint's dry. And uh, I have one that's effectively assembled here. And when you look at the instructions, um, I'll look there, for example, you can see the cross member, the backing plate, and uh, kind of where the small tab goes. So if you look at this as a mirror, uh, this is going to sit actually on the passenger side uh, cross backing plate and cross member. So that's how it's going to sit with a larger tab to the bottom. And all I did was just put it in like this. And uh, you can actually see I don't have a whole lot to compress. I have a little bit there. But uh, I'm going to zip tie that, put the other one together, and then I'll start the, uh, I'll raise the truck back up and then I'll do the install process. Okay, the mounts are all uh, zip tied and tied together. And you know, the documents that they have right here from Energy Suspension are pretty solid. They pretty much give you what you need to do and look at. Uh, for example, uh, on the right side of this picture, you can come down here and you can see there is a bigger tab on the bottom. That's going to be to the interior of the engine. Uh, accordingly, I zip tied the two outside because there's a single bolt that uh, I need to get in and tie down that's uh, closer to the engine and then a uh, single zip tie in the center and that gives you the two bolt holes on the outside that tie into the frame and the uh, the cross member. So the other side is an exact mirror copy of that except this one goes again from on the driver's side and with a large tab down and you can see that you know, those zip ties are going to mirror. So, got a nice little uh, two motor mounts put together and we'll get those installed. Okay, there's the passenger side uh, completely installed. Uh, well, sort of. If you look in, in the back, you'll see that uh, there's a missing uh, nut for some reason. Uh, the bolt slides in like a dream. Same thing on the driver's side. But for some reason in this process, in the cleaning, we misplaced those two bolts. We need to go find those two, uh, stick those on, and uh, that's the end of it. But anyway, that's it. That was a little bit bigger of a job. So here's some after action on this. Uh, these, those, uh, there's three bolts that hold this item in. Let me see if I can just put the light down. 
So there's three bolts that hold this in. Uh, one, two, and then there's a, a third in the far back. So the, the way this uh, 99 GMC you kind of set up is it's effectively two clamshells. Uh, the first one is here, attached to the um, the cross member, and then the other one is this one, right attached to the uh, the the block. So what uh, what keeps those things together is the pass through bolt, and that's actually right here. And because it's not bolted in, I can actually pull it out, and you can see the 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 weight of the vehicle is on there. And let me see if I can. I mean, the full weight of the vehicle is on there, and you can slide it in and out, and the other side aligns up perfectly well. So that's what you got. So I can just slide that thing back in. Obviously, I'm not going to drive it until I get a bolt uh, for that. So uh, anyway, so that's the whole setup, and it's that pass-through bolt that keeps everything, uh, keeps the, the upper and the lower uh, clamshells tied together. Pretty simple design. Uh, three bolts needed. Uh, but the underside bolts were a huge pain in the ass to get to, especially the lower cross member bolt. There's uh, there's not a lot of space to work with. I used uh, their both. Uh, I had two 15 box wrenches, so if you use those, you can kind of get your way your hands in there and kind of wiggle that away. Um, uh, I had a helper hold on these two near mounts. I had a hold, helper hold the top two nuts and uh, top two bolt heads rather and then I crawled underneath on a on a, a runner and I used uh, on the passenger side I ended up just using a box wrench as well and I believe I used an 11 16th on the nut in the back um, that worked really well for both of those on the driver side it was a lot tighter uh, I couldn't get the angles right so what I ended up using was a uh, three-eighths inch wrench, uh, and uh, two extensions, and one uh, angle nut. So, uh, and I think that was also an 11 sixteenths I used. So, that's that's what I had to use for those to kind of wrap it up. So, hopefully that helps out. I uh, got my two energy suspension motor mounts in, the transmission mount installed, and we are two nuts away from then uh, starting to put the headers back on. So... Thanks, hope this helps. Hey everyone, JC here. Well, back with another episode of Project Yukon. Uh, I had a EGR code of some sorts. I, I, could, I didn't write it down, I can tell you what it is. It's a 4100 series, or a 04100 series. And um, so I'm suspecting that either I have a clogged uh, or carbon fouled EGR. Um, or maybe just a bad uh, EGR uh, system, period. So anyway, on the 99 Yukon, it's fully electronic. Uh, these are about 140 bucks, $135 if you have to replace the entire thing. I'm going to try and uh, uh, see if I can clean it and plug it back in and see if that fixes the code, especially since I'm working on uh, the uh, exhaust system and cleaning out the cats. So basically I'm having a whole new flow uh, exhaust system. Um, I figured this is probably a good thing to start and get this cleaned up before I get my headers on, new cats on, and my new exhaust system from Magnaflow. So uh, we're going to look at the EGR and uh, pull it out. That right there is a, a, a 10 millimeter and down there there's one there and then there's one in the back. You can see that. And uh, all you gotta do is pretty much just pop those two out, uh, unclip that right there, and let me see if I can hang this up here. All right. So uh, anyway, basically just uh, unclip that, unpop, unscrew that, and un uh, unbolt that in the back, and then that should lift out. I do have a new gasket for that, so I'll replace that uh, just uh, prophylactically after I clean that, and we're uh, set to go. All right, with the screwdriver, all I gotta do is get down under here, uh, pop that up, and then that comes off. And then uh, you can just tuck that thing out of the way up here, like that. 
and now you, you have nice exposure to the bolt way back up there. Come on, focus. Way back up there, and then this one here, and so we'll un undo those right now. Hey YouTube, Econ Project uh, back again. Whoops, sorry about that. All right, well, we got the headers installed, the uh, Gibson Ceramics on the 99 Yukon, and uh, there they are. Right now, I'm working on the wire looms and, and uh, replacing the old OEMs with some uh, eight millimeter uh, uh, spark plug wires. I got the spark plug wires in. I can tell you, these two back here are really difficult to get to, and I couldn't use a torque wrench, so I actually had to tighten them down from the bottom, from the uh, underside. Uh, these are all good. You know, the normal, uh, I think it's 120 to 180 inch, uh, uh, inch pounds. What was that? Uh, here we'll go over here. And these are installed. Now this one I had a problem with. And I gotta fix this. This one right here, this little booger, uh, right now, uh, I don't have a bolt in there because I can't get a bolt in there because when I pulled the manifold off, that hole was, uh, that bolt was stripped. So I'm going to have to figure out uh, what to do with that. Maybe take it to a machine shop and see if they can uh, help me fix that. But anyway, running on five out of six bolts right now. But they are tightened down. And I'll run it for 100 miles and, and, uh, and re-tighten them. I can't. i got to run it and uh, at least get it down to a machine shop uh, whenever I can. So, uh, again, spark plugs in on this, all tightened down. Um, I'm putting in a, a new wire looms and some new spark plug wires. And, you know, we'll keep kind of chugging away. So, here's the next project. Yep. Magnaflow Cat. A Magnifo cat back exhaust ending with a three and a half inch pipe. This is all three inches. Sorry about the air hoses and mess right now. It's been a long day. <clears throat> long day. And uh well we didn't well I don't have any videos this is, uh videos of this, sorry about that, but um uh, I did do a let me see. Not that I'm gonna show you a whole lot down here, but um uh, we did a uh, drop the, the drive axle and replaced uh, both U joints uh, as well as the seal up there, and then and then uh, actually we replaced the uh, or dropped the uh, old transfer fluid transfer case fluid because somebody had put an ATF, so I had to put in the the blue stuff. Anyway, so uh, two brand new U joints, um, new seal, new fluid, and then reinstalled the drive shaft. So that was kind of fun. And uh, oh, there you can see, I actually got uh, an example of one of the four of nice new O2 sensors. So that'll be that'll be part of the addition. There's another one right there, and another one in the back over there. And uh, so there you go. Ugh. All right, so that was uh, basically that was today. Headers, drive shaft, and uh, spark plugs. A lot of work today, but uh, try to bun this thing up tomorrow and take it for a spin and see how the exhaust sounds. All right, cheers. There she is, K and N airbox in place. Oh, I gotta make those last final clip connectors tied in. Wherever those are. Uh, uh, O2s are in, yep. Headers, new plugs, new wires, new EGR, and uh, oh, this is the beginning of a backup light system, but I haven't figured that out. That's, that's another one. There's the wires in the back, running right to the front, running right to the headers. We're just rotating the tires now. Yeah. Making a video. So. I'm gonna get the jack 
wipes off the car, you need to remove the bubble plastic off the tip. Shiny Magnaflow. Okay, the uh, Yukon's all buttoned up and tires are torqued on, on, wheels, and we're back where we started, which is by the exhaust tip. Okay, unpaused. It, you want to hold it? I'll do it. Give it a little bit of gas. Hold it. It's a pretty incredible throttle response.